Hello and welcome in this second class of the Ages Way. Today we're going to discuss about script organization. It's important to keep your script organized as clear as possible so it's easy to read. But first of all, how do we read a new script? <laughs> You have several software that use notes, and in most of them, you read the script from left to right. You have the input here, and you go like this to the output. And in the middle of this, you will put your notes. That goes like this, and then another one, and sometimes you will have notes that come here, and then you continue until you reach the output. This is the case for software like Fusion or Maya, for example, and others. But in Nuke, the correct way of reading a script is from top to bottom. So the input is here on top and the output is here on bottom. And if you need to add something to this pipe, it's going to be here on the left side. So everything that is a new footage or process, you're going to put it here on the left side. And if you want to use a mask or if you have a roto or a mat or whatever, you put it here on the right. Okay, it's going to be like that. So you read the script this way. You have the input that is the B side. Okay, B for background. You have the footage or process here on the A side, that it's on the left. The mask, Roto, that is here on the right. And the output is on the bottom. If we take a look with the merge node, we can see that by default, the A input is on the left. So it's meant to be plugged like this. The B input is here in the middle. So we can plug it with an input coming from the top. And here on the right, you have the arrow for the mask. So it's meant to be like that. And at the end, the output is here, meant to be plugged in the bottom. Also, something very important when you are creating your script is to keep your main input and your main output connected with one straight single line like this, okay? This way you can keep a very clear script that you can read easily. And everything that you add, new processes or whatever that you're gonna do here, okay? You keep it on the uh, left side, so you do a process that has several nodes and uh, work on it. Like this, so you have a process. And this one, you will plug it to your main pipe. Same as if you have main rotos or mask or whatever, you keep it here on the right side. So it's always the same logic, but what I mean is that keep one single line as your main pipe, okay? Try to avoid doing something like this, where you have your uh, main input and your main output somewhere here, for example. And you start to do something that looks like this and then here and there and then you go here and at the end you go like this and you have your output like that. Because right now I have like three or four nodes, but when you have a very big script, it starts to be very difficult to read. One last thing. This is a personal tip. When you are creating nodes, try to avoid doing that. If you have the input here and the output there, let's add a shuffle, for example. I will plug it this way. And then I put a grade. And then I will merge everything together and add a roto. Try to avoid doing that. Why? Because if you read the script a little bit further like that, this is not clear. 
Is this a mask coming from the right to the left? Is it something else? It's hard to say. Try instead doing this. Add a dot like that and a dot like this and same for the roto. This way you always have the input on the top, the output on the bottom and it's way easier to read. Take a look. Now let me show you a script that I have done some years ago when I was working in a company called The Fridge in Brussels. This is a pretty big script. Take a look here. You see? You have a lot of nodes and a lot of backdrops. This is a pretty complicated script. But as you can see, everything is well organized. Everything is pretty clear. You have backdrops, you have processes, and as you can see, all the processes or the footage is here on the left side. And everything that is rotos or whatever or masks are here on the right side. And this is the most important for me. You have your main input here on the top and the output here in the bottom. And as you can see, there is just one single line that is my main pipe. Okay? This way I know exactly what's happening, where are everything. Another thing, as you can see, I have colored backdrop. The color I use is not uh, random colors. As you can see, here it's blue, here it's orange, it's yellow. Those are the same color of the nodes I'm using. If you look here, when I create a gray node or a color node, it's always blue. When I create a roto node, or a roto paint, it's always green. Or same thing with a blur, it's orange. So here I use backdrops that have the same color. This way when I am further like that, it's easier for me to know. This is grading. This is a pre-render because yellow is for a right node. Here is a filter, can be depth of field or blur or stuff like that. If you keep a color code this way, it's always gonna be easier to read when you have a big script like that. Also, here I used dot with a label on it. Look. You put a label and you can change the size. This way you can easily separate processes. So I know this is the blood burst. Everything that is happening here is blood burst. And here it's a real light, the muzzle flash, etc, etc. So when you keep a big complex disorganized since the beginning, it's way easier to work and if you have to make changes later, it's even easier. If you want to keep everything organized and use backdrops, it can be a little bit annoying, I understand. Because for example here, if I have some grade nodes and I want to put them in a backdrop, I have to do that, create the backdrop. And then the, the color of the backdrop is random, so I have now to, to change the color to uh, match the grade node. So I come here, but then it's kind of difficult to find the, the, the same color. Uh, let's say that it's like this. And then, for example, if I have another set of grade nodes, like this, and I put everything in a backdrop, once again, the color is different and then I have to do all over again. So here and now I have to find uh, the color, but it can be a little bit difficult to do that every time. It can be annoying. So in order to keep it simple and go faster, I'm using a tool from Victor Perez. It's called the preset backdrop and you will find it here. I will put the link in the description. What is this preset backdrop? It is a uh, Python script that allows you to create uh, backdrops uh, here with a preset. So for example, for the grade here, I have here the grade, I can put a custom label like CC for example, and OK, and everything is already set, the size, the label, and the color. So if I have to do another one, I can redo it and you can even put a hotkey. So now I can go even faster. I can go here, grade, and if I don't put anything here, it's gonna take the, the label grade. 
So like this I can go fast and keep everything organized. If you check the Victor Perez script, the colors and the presets are different. So what I've done, I change a little bit the code so it match my needs. If you want to do the same, you just have to open the script and you have to change little thing. So as you can see, it's the Victor Perez script and I modify it in September 2017. So it's been a while, I'm using it. You just have to change here the name of the input and here you have the presets. You just change the color here, okay? And these colors, you will find them if you go here, here, it's the HSV, all right? So you just change the color as you like and you take this information and you put it here in the color. This way, you can have your own presets to go as fast as possible and keep your comp organized. If you want more information about Nuke script organization, I recommend you to take a look at this very interesting tutorial. It will be a nice addition to this lesson. I put the link in the description. That's it for today. I hope that you have learned some useful tips. My name is Alex Gaudiano and I will see you in the next class. Thank you very much for watching. Just before leaving you, I would like to give you an information. This course is 100% free and I'm not paid for it. I really made it with the desire to share knowledge with you. But if you like to reward or support the job I've done, you can give me a tip by following the PayPal link in the description. Once again, thank you very much and see you soon.